Where are we live right now? Link LinkedIn? Uh, Facebook and YouTube. Sweet. Wow. Welcome, anyone that might be watching. In a couple minutes, we're going to dive in and talk all about stock photo, right? And and why, what, what, how, why, why would we talk about stock photo? Well, it's an important part of understanding how you can wield images and images that are not of you potentially or of your business, but that are appropriately purchased and, and, and whatnot. So uh, we're going to start in a couple minutes, but we always like to give a little, I think we're in that zone where we would give um, our own favorites, if you will, right? We used to do that. Can I, can I take over for a sec? I have an idea. Oh, hell yeah, you could take over. So I found, it's from a few years ago, so don't, don't, don't quote me on when it was, but it was the most popular. Oh yeah, oh. we need to see what you're about to share. Oh, Mike, you gotta give me host sharing, or not host access, but sharing access. Hold on, I might be able to give you that. Can I? Nope. Give it a shot, David. It's Thanks. Mike. Cool. So I pulled some of the most popular oh, stock yeah. photos that exist. You've probably have seen these. Yes. So there's like this one. There's a wooden background, I guess, is pretty popular. Another team meeting going on. Oh, very, very in. Right? Right? Like you're like, hey, I, I, I really want to work with that company. Wait a sec. I've seen these people before. There's the, we love the, the, the growth, the, the growth. I think that's more like symbol symbolic. Oh, I was thinking like it's that. Oh, but see, but I think it has multiple purposes. It, it could be well, isn't that the beauty of stock photo? Right. Right. Or it could be that they love to cultivate things. Fantastic. Like, like or grow things or, or to be good for the community or good for, all right, right. Uh, I, I, the the good old family photo, mother and daughter. Yeah, that's a mother daughter. That's definitely a daughter. I mean, it could be a sister and a younger sister. You never know. And then there's the team. These are a working, but only hands of people working. <laughs> right, because you want to show that we get work done or that work happens here. And that's what we're going to kind of go through is we're going to talk about what stock photo is, why it's used, and, and then even dive into kind of how we recommend it be used because it, it has a, a purpose, right? It actually has a purpose. It's an entire industry, by the way. So David, why don't you start by defining stock photo? Your mic might have um, done the thing that it does. Oh, so yeah, let's yeah, start. Yeah. There we go. And I was looking off to the side when I, I was muted. So what I, is stock was, photo? Stock photo, by definition of what I would consider Google to consider a stock photo, because we're a marketing agency, right? Then and, and how people view it. Stock photo is something that is probably not unique to you and is probably can be found and purchased for rights and you can use it and anybody can use it, which means that it's not unique to your business, but serves a purpose, but it's a photo that can be used by anyone. Right. And there's a couple, there, there's two main versions. There's ones that are publicly available for no dollars where you can go on websites like uh, unsplash is one.com or a pixabay.com. And those are, People have submitted their work, their literal photos they took, and allow you legally to use it. Some will have stipulations where you can't use it commercially. Some will have stipulations that are for editorial use only. Others will be literally wide open creative commons, you could call that, where it's like literally usable, right? And photographers will do this. I'll give the why, right? Why would anyone even do that? It's typically to build credibility, right? So if your photo is being used a lot, and photos you took are used a lot, it is a likely chance down the road you might be able to sell them. So then there's other sites, Getty Images, as an example, iStock Photo, and many, 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 many others, Deposit Photos, where you can either buy credits or individually buy the copyright for usage of a photo. Now, again, best practice 
would be to make sure you absolutely know the licensing of whether you're going the free route or the paid route, even within the paid route, there's still rules that apply of how you can use them and where you can use them. But this is an entire industry and it's a, it's a robust industry. A lot of money flows through these sites because the reality is it's also nothing new. Stock photo existed in print media before the web was even a thing. Because right, right. What, they had booklets back then that yes. you could then order the prints that they would send you the like a, a film thing possibly or whatever you needed to develop. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Because imagine if you were a lawyer in 1982 and you wanted to put together a really nice pamphlet, but maybe at the time you even didn't think or you maybe were by yourself and wanted to look a little bigger. So rather than a photo shoot of just you in nine poses, you would purchase some stock available photos of like we like David was even showing someone working writing some stuff down or some law books or something like that yes right, could yeah, you have taken yeah could you have taken your own photo absolutely and do we encourage some of that we sure do if you have the availability to take photos of anything you might need for your website so for example I'll use us as an example although again we we do have usage for stock photo and I'll explain but if we wanted to take photos of computers and take photos of a website and take photos of our office, we do do that. You can go to our Google My Business and you can see po real photos of like us and our office. But if we wanted to show a team collaborating, for example, and let's say we weren't a web agency, but we had, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if we were a whatever business, but we were concerned, maybe we have high turnover. And if we took a team photo and someone moved on from the team. Now that photo is a liability for us potentially on our website. So you can see why in an example, just like that, somebody may look to purchase a stock photo that might show people collaborating that are just models. Let's be honest. It's either models or hands of models that show that, Hey, we collaborate over here, but they're not showing any individuals specifically that maybe you would see when you walk in the door, taking that further. What if we used all computers that we use because they're great because they're like really efficient, but they're not attractive or something. And we wanted a picture of computers that really look nice. So you can imagine we might buy a stock photo of something that looks like what we want. Go ahead, David. But Craig, but life's got easier. I got one of these babies. That's right. Times have changed though. Big time. We're not in 1982 anymore. We're, you know, I even think back to um, uh, six or eight years ago, right? When you would take a photo, it was three megapixels on your phone, still kind of sometimes chunky to get it off. And it looked okay. It was slightly grainy because it really never was like full web specific, but but it, it, it did the trick or whatever. And that's when, to me, stock photos though became like the bee's knees like it was became everywhere right because like now um people needed photos but couldn't figure out a way to put them on their site big time and social media even took that to a new level where people realized oh my gosh i need content i need content i gotta post something some were less comfortable taking that photo or putting themselves out mm -hmm. there i will say that just bringing it into some actionable stuff about stock photo. We believe there's a time and a place for using stock photo or also conversely not. And when you're thinking of your website or your social presence, the more organic and native to you and your business, you can be the better, but not everyone's comfortable in front of a camera. That's a real thing. And we're never trying to put somebody in an uncomfortable position, right? Maybe you're only happy with your, your headshot on your about page and you literally want to be nowhere else. That's okay. That's your right. It's your business. It's you. You get to do you. That's where stock photo can come in and save the day. There's also certain industries where stock photo makes a lot of sense, like real estate or management of real estate, right? You, you may want to show a wide variety of home types and not be able to go out and photograph them. People, homeowners might not want you to photograph. So you'd want to purchase photos that are legally allowable to be used. I'll, I'll, we can do websites, right? We can do a website for a plumber, right? And maybe though, obviously showing a, we do web design for a plumber, having what us in a meeting maybe could work, but maybe having a picture of a plumber 
on the homepage, yes, it's stock photo or not homepage, but on the service page, maybe though resonates with them. Ah, yes, I am a plumber. That's me, right? If they're more visually oriented versus like a, a group of four or five people in suits in a meeting, right? Doesn't meet to them. They're like, I don't ever wear a suit and I'm not going to sit in an office. What are you talking about? It's not me, right? So it's relatable, right? On, on those topics. Exactly. I'll take it to, to a different example, different industry. Imagine if you were in a business consulting, for example, and, and maybe you start solo, which is a total a thing consultants do. They start as individuals. But visibly, maybe your target client aren't small businesses. Maybe they're midsize or even big corporations. So maybe they, again, want to see you. They're going to see you on the about page, perhaps. But think of what they need to see themselves or see themselves or visualize themselves in the imagery of your site. Because if you can think of how your client, your intended customer will digest whatever it is you're putting out, whether that's a social post or a website, if you can start like role playing, put that hat on of what they're going to see, you can start to play that game of, ah, I would love them to know that I'm going to sit there with their whole team and dive in. Well, in that case, you may want to purchase a conference room, a busy conference room photo with literally someone, you can't even see their face pointing at the whiteboard. So they can visualize that that would be you. Then they go to the about page and they can see all about you and all that. But otherwise you'd have to literally hire a photographer and several models or ask a favor of a client, which is totally cool too. If you can get that done and get that organic shot in, David, go ahead. I think that's what you're no, saying, no. but like. Right, right. I, I think like that. that is, can't believe these words are going to come out of my mouth. That is the benefits of a stock photo, right? Is it sets maybe the tone that you want to put across for today. Tomorrow, right. replace that stock photo whenever possible with one that you can create by yourself of your Absolutely. own, your iPhone with your Pixel 7 or whatever, you know. Option. But in that example, you would agree, like it might be hard for you to get that client to agree to let you shoot your work, your work with them. Maybe well, they don't yeah. want, it. maybe they're You're maybe a brand new business. Yeah. Right. Or maybe it's the type of client that wouldn't even give a testimonial because they don't want to, they, they just don't, not interested. So for them You've might done. still be a great client if you book, if you get them, but to get them, they need to see that you could work with a group. And that again is one example of that. Right. Right. If you've worked with like an enterprise business, there's going to be a, you know, and then maybe that's your only clients, right? There's not going to be pictures of you in meetings with them because they're not going to want to be seen there. Yeah. That or, doesn't or mean let's... you can't have pictures that show other things. It's maybe just not that, but maybe there is a stock photo that shows something to give Correct. the understanding of what a meeting is going to be like. Right. Let me, let me go the other way with an example too. Like if you, if you're a small restaurant or sandwich shop, we're going to recommend you use almost no stock photo. Sure. Take those photos of your food, take those photos, get the, get the pixel, the iPhone, the whatever, take a photo of your shop. It's going to serve you better because the expectation of your business is the person's going to get the thing they get in person at your location. Totally oh different from a lawyer, for example, who yeah. could use a picture of books to denote, I do law. You can't I do got, that if you're a sandwich shop. I got an anecdote, right? So um, Uber Eats, right? Always every company, every restaurant has a little headline or a little, little um, stock photo or photo above, right? Now, some of the brands, whatever reason it is, they've been able to have their own, right? Majority seem to have their own, but then some of them for, they don't either have their own or they don't actually maybe actually serve things in bento boxes or whatever. There was one that I saw just the other day, saw three with the same photo That's and right. quickly lost. Well, I knew that that's not going to be what the food looks like, but then I went down and there's another one that was unique. And I was like, oh, I bet you that's going to be how the, you know, sushi is going to look, or that's going to be how the, the, the noodles will look when the other one was like, well, how come all three of those have the same looking tacos? Exactly. And if your business is centered around something that has, again, a, a literal like visual component, Stock photo is never going to be a good fit because you're going to accidentally tell your potential customer that you're just like a million other things. Now, 
if you're in an industry where the differential is in a conversation you're going to have, and like I use law as an example, right. you see a lot of a lot of legal websites and a lot of people are wearing suits and a lot of people are behind books. There's just an industry standard for it because the real the real thing is the benefit of that is typically in either the text content or that conversation you're going to have. They all have law degrees, but are they the right fit for you might not come across in, in any Again, one image is why you can get away with it, although we still recommend either getting a photographer or taking a few shots, because I think where we are now in 2022, your potential client needs that connection and doesn't just want to see the scales of justice that they saw on six other websites. Well, and and going back to the definition, right, of what a stock photo is, right? It's a photo that's used multiple times. And Google at this point has indexed many, many photos and will immediately pull that photo. It scans it, knows that it's been used 150 times. Then it loses maybe a little bit of some of the uniqueness to your site. Also on top of it, having your own photos, uh, Google has a really cool API that we've played around with. Um, I think I even did a, a talk on it, which was about how um, it can pull things from your photo. So if you're professional, it will say professional. If you're like, you know, a dentist office, right? And the, the picture is of somebody smiling, right? That, that's going to mean something, your teeth. Or like there's been tests about zooming out on a certain type of photo that shows dentist versus like somebody's mouth, like a dentist, they, they want to see the dentist working, not necessarily somebody's mouth working yep. because that. It, the photo is recognized as being a dentist and not like right. surgery. Oh, no. And it's right. like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Like that confuses maybe Google. Is this a surgeon or is this a dentist? You get the one that shows of the person in the scrubs and the little metal things or whatever. Um, obviously I'm not a dentist, um, but there's- They a definitely big, have scrubs and metal things, right? There's scrubs and metal things. That's what they call them. But there's obviously a very big understanding now of what are in those photos and that only helps your business. And, and that's new. That's newer that Google can take it to that level, but that's only going to continue. Whereas, you know, five, six years ago, there'd be a picture of three people, two males and a female, and Google didn't know the difference. It maybe just knew three people were there. Now it knows there's two males and a female. There's there's levels to the machine learning. And what I'm what we're saying as a as a overarching and a way to kind of bring this all together for everybody is if possible, Use organic photos, your own created content that you cultivate either with your phone, with a photographer. The reason we keep bringing up the phones is the actual camera that's in the newer versions of the phone. So that would be the modern version of your iPhone, your Google Pixel, or your Samsung, or some LGs too have that higher level camera. It's better than point and shoot cameras of three years ago. That's literally just true. It's a very good camera. So you could have your significant other literally take a few photos. You'll be shocked when you put them on a desktop at the resolution. So it's not as hard as that as it used to be. Or obviously there's a lot of photographers or literal like people that would do that as a favor for you, or you have potential web agencies that would help you with that kind of thing. So if possible, try to go organic with it actual create the content that's about you and your business but don't fear the usage of stock photo when you're appropriately putting it where it should be if you're again running your whole business off it as a restaurant to david's point and you're using only stuff you bought off i stock photo it's going to be real tough when people get to your location and nothing looks that way. Now, if you decided to scale your food to look exactly like your stock photos, kudos to you. I think you're going to win. You, you, you can clearly Good style job. your stuff. Good job. But on the whole, it's a great tool to use. Stock photo is a great tool to put in your arsenal, right? If you're thinking of social media, and then and I'll kind of end with this, it's again, Organic native would be the big where we would push hard, get you there. But if for some reason you're just unable, you can't, sure, you could use a stock photo to do to, to get across a message. Um, they, was it Instagram or um, Facebook? There was tests or whatever that people ran that found that a slightly grainy and non properly angled photo looks does performs better than a stock was, photo on social. That's right. 
So it, people it's expect not even it and about... scroll right by. They scroll right by because they know already. They're like, hey, I've seen that photo before. Or if you're ever wondering what David's talking about there, wait for the next holiday, scroll Instagram, you will see the same happy whatever day it is stuff. And it's just, but then you'll stop when it's like the person you know's face saying happy 4th of July or whatever. There's a total difference there. Yeah. I think that's where you were going with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, the, whether it's for the holidays, whether it's for just like a general like, I don't know, a picture of people working or a sunset or something like that. People, people, if they've seen that stop photo, it it, it does not resonate. They're not going Correct. to interact. They're with not going to stop. I don't stop. know if that's necessarily even Facebook algorithm or instagram's algorithm so much as much well, as human just behavior, people are though. smart enough now to know that's that's well too well produced people don't want overly well produced in certain places I think well yeah i mean if, if, if you're scrolling the gram as they say and you're swiping and you see that. something that looks like 10 other sunsets it doesn't stop you but if your friend took an epic photo and you could even see it maybe it's even that you're like or they're doing a selfie of them with the sunset behind it stops you in your tracks. Mm -hmm. And we've encouraged uh, uh, clients of ours and would continue to do so that the more organic you can get with that, the better, the more it can be you, your team, stuff around your community. And that's another interesting wrinkle that it doesn't, you, some people I think are getting intimidated by the fact that they've got to be on stage, so to speak. It's got to be them. And the reality is you could do everything around you and still really benefit from that. You could still anchor people that you're a central florida business because you took a photo at of of something that looks enough like disney you know what i mean like like those things can still connect people to it so or go ahead no 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 Uh, that 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 there as well right so don't overthink about the photo or that you need to have a certain place right and even going back to let's say you don't have a big group of clients or you're not in a big boardroom or you don't even have a big boardroom but guess what you in Orlando, at Lake Eola, in a place that maybe is very recognizable to your region or to what's going on. Or, you know, if you're a, I don't know, if you live in New York and maybe you're next to Broadway or something like people know, okay, cool. This person's local and they're involved. No, David, you nailed it though. Like what if a lawyer who doesn't want to be photographed goes to a coffee shop and the shot is of the the coffee and forward, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't see them but you're seeing the book, the top of the book they might be reading and the rest of the area that clearly looks and is obvious that they're at that place. Right, that there. could be a great post. That could be a great image. Right, right. The, the other thing I was thinking about was um, you, you, gotta, you gotta pay attention to what you also have on your site, right? Because um, we were doing the research for uh, a painter and we were looking at local painters in Orlando only and yet the houses have mountains in the background and there was right. one with snow right, no on trees. That's not Florida. We're Florida. We're in Orlando. That's not going to happen. Who can relate to that? And at that point, you know, that can't be real, right? And how's that not actual proof of your work? Like the, big, the more this big. progresses with the, with, with web, with social, with everything, the, the more authentic people are looking for. You're looking for that painter that clearly can specialize. If you're really thinking about it as a homeowner, and you live in central Florida and you're seeing snow photos and trees that are not native to Florida, there might, might, I'm not saying this would happen, but there might be a moment where you're like, well, will they know the paint that's really good in the sun? Cause I live in the sun, right? Like there's literally a difference to that thing. So in that example, we would encourage at least, even if you couldn't get the approval from homeowners to take photos of their house, which is very likely some aren't going to want that, that you would at least do search a little bit on, those either free or paid resources and find Florida homes. It all exists. There's photographers that did it everywhere. You can see, you can get it. And as a, as a final note, I just want to make sure, I know we didn't touch on this, what you should never do. What's not a best practice. In fact, it's a bad practice and get you in trouble. Don't just go to Google images and think you can right click, save any of that and use that on your site because it's on Google. That's actually Google images is allowed to display that as a search but almost all of those photos, unless you literally linked and got to Unsplash or Pixabay, are not free. They are not free for use. And you could eventually get even a person telling you either you got to take it down or pay me. That is a real thing. And if you just go to Google Images and think, oh, but it was on Google, so it's, it's there, I can use it. That is not true. And we want to be very clear that only go to 
photo sites like Pixabay, deposit photos. There, there's sites for it. And you could Google stock photo and go to that website. But if you're going to that image tab or those first images that come up and thinking, because Google gave it to me, I can use it. That is a hard no. And you you can be, uh, brought, litigation can be brought against you technically by the right, copyright they, owner. Right. Some of them are copyright and some of them are, are, are from professional photographers. Some of them are even like, there was one from a, a newspaper from New York Times, right? It but, was like, oh, well, wouldn't that, you would almost think could we, the, the photo was used and linked to the article that the photo was referencing and they right. still gave them a, a cease and desist. Absolutely. So and they're within their rights. Yet, so. They're within their rights to do that because these yeah. things are owned. They are the intellectual property of the creator, but great websites like Unsplash and Pixabay allow creators to provide safe. it for free. It's Very safe, safe areas. Yeah. And you could do that. This ties into some of our upcoming topics. In the next couple of months, we're going to be talking about online scams and how to avoid them because mm -hmm. some of you might have received an email at some point. You're using a photo on your website, cease and desist. And sometimes they're not real. You might be thinking, but I took all my photos. Other times it could be real. So we're going to talk in the next few months about online scams, how to avoid them. We're going to do a little deeper dive on Facebook. We're even going to talk about NFTs for small business, which is a honey, a sweet spot for me. So upcoming months, lots of fun topics, any closing points. I think stock photo, ironically, there is, there was more, it's why we had it as a topic. There was more to talk about with it. And there still is than most people would think, because we want to make sure people understand the don'ts like Google, right? Don't just go to Google, right? Click and save. And then the do's that there are uses for it. Anything you'd want to close with my man? No, no. Like I said, I think it's a great starting point. I think it's something that has its purpose, right? Along with a organic photo strategy and anybody's. And the exciting part is, and, and I love it, is how easy it is to now create your organic photos so much today than it ever was. And you know, I hope small businesses feel comfortable doing it. And, and should really, you know, embrace it because I think it reaps the rewards, right? For, Absolutely. For, for their marketing. And this is our first time taking our, our webinar live on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so in the future, we're going to continue doing that as well. So if you're either on our webinar via Zoom or you're uh, on either Facebook or YouTube, feel free to drop a comment, any questions you may have. If it comes in in real time, we'll do our best to answer it. Otherwise, we'll definitely get back to you and answer it if it's as a comment or, or however. You could literally email us if you know us too as well. Uh, but either way, we're excited for, again, those upcoming topics, and we'll see you again soon.